it's a very weird situation uh, that we have found ourselves in where like the ADL sucks as an institution, but they're absolutely correct on this. Yes, Elon Musk is a racist anti-Semitic defender of white supremacy who's attacking the ADL because they're a Jewish group. And yes, the ADL is a racist anti-Palestinian organization with a well-documented history of collusion with cops and attacking progressives. And our tech lead, Elon Musk, says he's threatening to sue the Anti-Defamation League for Lost Revenue at X, the website formerly known as Twitter. Musk claims, without any evidence that we've seen, that the ADL statements about rising hate speech on the platform are the reason why there is, has been a 60% decrease in advertising on X. The ADL and other organizations have noted the increase in hate speech on Elon is so bad that... Like, the ADL is correct in this situation. The ADL as an organization is um, not the absolute worst uh, uh, Zionist organization, but definitely still is a Zionist organization and therefore uh, tends to completely do ridiculous shit uh, oftentimes. And they're according to their charter, at the very least, they consider uh, any kind of criticism or criticism of Israel to be comparable to anti-Semitism. Uh, it's the Anti-Defamation League. They are absolutely correct here with the, with the Elon situation and with the Twitter situation. They're not wrong. You know, they're 100% right. On the platform, since Musk took over and removed much of the content moderation, a spokesman for the ADL responded to Musk's threat, quote, the ADL is unsurprised yet undeterred that anti-Semites, white supremacists, conspiracy theorists, and other trolls have launched a coordinated attack on our organization. This type of thing is nothing new, unquote. This is not the first time Musk has threatened to take legal action against his opponents and critics. Last month, he sued the Center for Countering Digital Hate, a nonprofit group whose research found that hate speech on X has risen dramatically under Musk's ownership. Kara Swisher, the host of the podcast On with Kara Swisher, among others, joins me now. Kara, thanks so much for being here. So he, he, Elon Musk uh, later said, quote, to be super clear, I'm pro-free speech, but against anti-Semitism of any kind. N never really a good sign when you... This is such a funny take because, like, it's just not true at all. Brother, you can't fucking say I'm pro-speech, but against anti-Semitism of any kind while you're simultaneously, like responding to accounts called like race realism is here and like underneath the, and, and the account will be like jewish professors uh are are uh you know pro censorship whereas christian professors are not and elon musk is responding to it like wow interesting it's a very weird situation uh, that we have found ourselves in where like the ADL sucks as an institution, but they're absolutely correct on this. Yes, Elon Musk is a racist anti-Semitic defender of white supremacy who's attacking the ADL because they're a Jewish group. And yes, the ADL is a racist anti-Palestinian organization with a well-documented history of collusion with cops and attacking progressives. 100%. It's such a weird circumstance. a weird situation but like yeah while the adl sucks on especially issues that pertain to palestinians they are 100 correct on this they're 100 correct on the fact that elon musk has openly unbanned nazis and and a shit ton of uh a shit ton of like prominent white nationalist accounts are literally getting money from Elon Musk directly. Twitter is straight up 4chan poll. Okay? 100%. That's what it is. Here is Dr. Uh, oh, here. Let's look at Mark Lamont Hill. Who literally was pr uh, persecuted by the ADL. For being pro-Palestine on mainstream media. He said, Elon Musk's attack on the ADL is dangerous, dishonest, and deeply anti-Semitic. He has turned this platform <clears throat> into an unprofitable white supremacist cesspool. Instead of taking accountability, he has chosen the not-so-subtly scapegoat Jews, which invites uh, violence from his Nazi base. 
Glenn Greenwald responded to it and said, and of course, it's 8,000 likes, by the way, because this is what the platform is about. The ADL played a major role in having you fired by publicly branding you an anti-Semite, watching you now go to bat for them and doing exactly the same thing to ADL's critics, volunteering to stand up and call the ADL's critics anti-Semitic is just wild. Elon Musk responded to that and said, bizarre. To which he responded, there's nothing bizarre about it, Elon. Yes, I've been unfairly targeted by the ADL. That doesn't negate the fact that you will amplify anti-Semitic threads, positively engage with white nationalist users, advance anti-Semitic conspiracies, and scapegoat Jews for the failures of this platform. Here, I mean, there's a bunch of notable incidents where Elon Musk has behaved in an incredibly anti-Semitic way. Elon Musk has gone beyond dog whistles and has now engaged in explicitly anti-Semitic tweet. Jays here refer to Jews. The implication is that Mel Gibson is buff because he hates Jews and that Biden drinks the blood of children. You can do adrenochrome or you can hate the Jays. Which way, Western man? To which Elon Musk responded, Gibson is really that buff these days? Um, for context, the conspiracy theory led to the worst mass shooting targeting Jews in U.S. history. Uh, where is it? Where is it? There was more. Oh, Anomaly is another one of these, like, openly white supremacist and anti-Semitic accounts. You got mega shook? What do you mean? Now Musk is just asking questions. One of Twitter's most notorious anti-Semites. It just so happens to be the, uh, that the questions fully align with the anti-Semitic trope that Jews control the media. Um... Why is this never in the news? Elon Musk responds. Anomaly says the people running the news companies in America hate America and Americans. How did it come to be this way? What do Epstein, Weinstein, and 85% of the writers, producers, media executives making the most subversive programming have in common? I'll give you a hint. Trump and Republicans pass speech orders trying to stop you from saying the truth about it, but it's cultural to blame white people. Hmm, I wonder what he's talking about here. Who's he talking about? Here's another instance where Elon Musk is positively engaging with an openly white nationalist account and wokeness who now gets money from Elon directly for posting white supremacist agitated propaganda. Harvard poll, 75% think less than a million illegals entered last year. When told the correct number, 2.75 million, 67% want stricter laws. Why is this never in the news, says Elon Musk? And wokeness uh, that he's engaging with in that situation also, in a different situation, be proud of your culture, who you are, and where you came from, unless you're white. If Kanye said white people instead of Jewish people, he would have had his own show on MSNBC by now. Typical racist-ass garbage. Okay? Like, end wokeness is just straight up. These are from 2022. Since then, they've gotten even more wild. Okay? There was another notable interaction. Oh, this one is a classic. To learn who rules over you, simply find out who you are not allowed to criticize. Voltaire, we need to rise up against children with leukemia. Now, people are, people are going to get mad and say, this is Kevin Strom, the Nazi who said this, a Holocaust denier. Um, but the re for the record, like, it's not a Voltaire quote, and it doesn't even matter. He's making fun of the quote anyway. This is not that bad. This... this Megaphonics is nowhere near as bad as like uh, all the other shit because he's like technically making fun of the quote regardless. The point is he could have deleted it. He doesn't need to delete that one. That one I don't uh, have an issue with. He ultimately, he ultimately has done way worse shit. Uh, that, that account did not even track because it was newer. He's done that since 2022 where Elon Musk has regularly at this point um responded if you look at his fucking replies or if you look at his likes he's like openly and regularly engaging with uh white supremacist accounts that are like 13 doing 1350 memes and 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 a bunch of other like you know oh yeah here the the monitoring bias guy for example like following that guy is is a, a great indication of of elon musk's own personal uh own personal situation 
monitoring biases an account that straight up posts white supremacist bullshit like race realism iq amongst different races uh and and uh regularly engages in the like oh why do certain races do sir way more crime you know what i mean he's done so much it's hard to it's hard to document every single thing that he's done uh because he's just engages it on a daily basis and there's not really too much that people can do about it you know what i mean what are you gonna do he's just too fucking he is uh way too powerful as a billionaire i reported i reported 10 nonsense in the last couple of months and i'm uh and never had any of my reports responded to no there is no there is no situation where like um <laughs> where you report Nazis and they're like, oh, wow, this guy's a Nazi. We should ban him. That's not happening. It's not going to happen ever. Since his purchase, since his purchase of Twitter, they've been very open about unbanning Nazis. Like they did. And they defend them all the time. He unbanned Dom Lucre after the dude posted child sexual abuse material that he had watermarked. Okay, that dude not only shouldn't be unbanned by Twitter for posting actual child sexual abuse that he put his own watermark on, which means that's in his fucking hard drives. That dude should be in jail. He should be banned by the by the law enforcement authorities. Okay, people that have that child sexual abuse material has gone to jail. They've gone to jail. Josh Duggar being a famous example of this. This gets posted in the comments of every article that New York Times, uh, wait, what, tweets? Remember, whether the ADL or any other anti-hate group have reason to encourage advertisers to leave Twitter, the first comment you see under every New York Times tweet now is a bot who says King Charles, Biden and the Pope surrender the U.S. and the world to the Jews. The Vikings beat the Jews? What? Servants of the Jews and of Marxists from the PRC Biden. Trump, Musk, DeSantis, McCarthy, Obama, Harris, Pence, McConnell, Jeffries, Austin. <laughs> are surrendering the U.S. and the world to the Jews and the CCP. I reported someone with a display, hang your local T-word, and the report came back saying they didn't violate the rules. Yes. It's just like, he just straight up is insane. I mean, this is what Twitter has become. Look at this. This another one of, like, Elon Musk's... Uh, Elon Musk's like idiotic fucking uh, uh, brigade of right wing weirdos. Rumors are circulating that Barack and Michelle Obama have split up due to an affair. Michelle is currently alone in Mallorca, Spain, and looks very distressed. This comes only weeks after their private chef, Tafari Campbell, died under mysterious circumstances. 33,000 likes. Shocking footage. Girl says Michelle Obama raped her at 13 years old. It's even worse than fucking, honestly, it's even worse than, than uh, Facebook because it's like more 4chan than Facebook. Facebook is where a lot of the old 4chan memes go to get like mass prominence. 4chan poll is where they make those memes and, and routinely uh, agitate towards people that they've declared enemies of their ideology. And the unfortunate reality is that, like, Twitter is now the hotbed for that kind of radicalization. There are more Nazis out and about openly fucking fantasizing about death to all commies, Jews, whatever the fuck they decide are their enemies than ever before. Look at any of my fucking quote retweets to get a better feel for how this works. I showed this earlier in the discord but like that mexico authorities tweet that i posted right originally it was like a bunch of libertarians who were like all all taxes are theft brother like you know welcome to you know welcome to the club now you get it or whatever right and then a bunch of groipers uh landed on it and then try to hit me with a fucking community note which got deleted but like now if you look at the fucking quote retweets okay but now when you look at all the fucking quote retweets, it's that guy, Bulwark15, who's like, why is it that every time I see people, it's like so negative? Why is it that every time I see the guy who thought I was enslaving my fucking mom? Okay. And then a shit ton of like the same, like tax the rich, make the rich pay, tax the rich, make the rich pay. 
And then if you look, if you dive down into it a little bit, okay? If you dive down into it a little bit more, you will find people calling me a swarthoid, which is like a 4chan way of saying I'm swarthy, which is like fucking ridiculous. But, you know, it's just, you look at that dude's, you look at that dude's fucking account and it straight up, it's like Stone Toss, the Nazi comic. You look at these guys and they're like fantasizing about killing, like driving over a black person and shit. It's just nuts. What does the word you use just mean? Um, they are, I don't know how to describe it, dude. It just, they're, it's like old antiquated ways of, of declaring that someone is not white, even though they are, you know what I mean? And people don't even fucking use it. Like Benjamin Franklin is the one who was uh, using this, right? They're, they're using like old timey ass words. Anyway. You have to clarify to people yeah, that you're right. against anti-Semitism. But now that we've, yeah. now that we've uh, explained it, now that we've, uh, you know, set the mood, maybe you'll develop a better understanding as to why, like, the ADL is not incorrect. So I say, let them fight. It's, it's just empirically true, mm -hmm. and this is part of his free speech position, when you take this, what he calls a purist free speech position, it's although, it's, right. it's, although it's not real, uh, he's, he blocks free speech he doesn't like. Yes. Um, but he allows anti-Semitism to, to flourish. I mean, we've all, we've all seen it. Right. Well, he's just, the First Amendment is a Swiss Army knife. Whatever it suits him, he'll right. do it in a way. He'll either block people or cut people off or sue people or say he's for free speech. It's sort of, it's his cloak that is, is everybody can see through. It's transparent. And so, um, you know, it's threatening to groups like ADL or a lot of these academic groups. I used to talk to all of them, and they're very nervous to talk because, or, or do reports. It's, it has a chilling effect on these people because they're going to be subject to a lawsuit by the world's richest man, who the reason advertising is down is because it's a worse platform. That's it. And so, you know, his tactic is, and I hate to say it, it's blame the Jews. That's what he's doing right here. And so that's why everybody's sort of incensed about what he's doing. His tweets are very carefully calibrated to sort of dog whistle to a lot of people and at the same time go, but I'm not an anti-Semite. Right, but he, but he... No one called him that, by the way. Right, well, I have seen some people call yes, him that, but, but, but the ADL didn't call no, him that. But, but he, um, he, I mean, he, he blamed the ADL, yes. said that they don't speak for Jews, right? He, he suggested they don't speak for Jews. Okay. I mean, anyway. Neither does he, but okay. Sure. Right. Nobody does, but all right. Is it not true though? Like, I mean, I've been, I, I'm still on X. I'm on several other sites you too. Are. But is it not true that he regularly engages with yes, people who are white supremacists and, and anti Semites, which yeah. sends a signal to people that, like, he is engaging with these people? He, he likes he these people. Engage. He, it's actually very jocular. In a lot of, he's let a lot back on. People that had been thrown off, he's let them back on. Um, that Twitter had taken off because of abuses of the platform under their rules. It's like this. Does anyone have that Discord sh uh, screenshot? The one that I posted. Oh, this, yeah. If you want to understand how Twitter is now, if you want to get a better feel for how Twitter is right now, this is it. This is a perfect, it, it, like, Twitter's like, discover more from this account that, uh, <laughs> discover more from this wonderful account that quote retweeted, retweeted you. And it's like, I discovered more and I did not like it, okay? It says, had a dream I ran over a black woman in my mom's Toyota. Like, back in the day, people were scared to post stuff like this because they would get banned. Nowadays, you could be like, you could be like a fucking 14 year old uh, who, who is, is incredibly, <laughs> I'm serving your retweets and every third person's username is racial slur 88. Yeah, that's what, that's what Twitter is now, you know? It's, it's probably going to have a negative uh, impact on society because a lot of these uh a lot of these people 
to characterize this as something that folks affirm is very far-fetched though well these guys are are incredibly active these guys are incredibly active online they're extremely online okay and the reality is that when you give them a platform like this they tend to to mistake how popular they are yeah but zero likes and no followers i'm guessing right says Derry kohi yeah that person being able to tweet stuff like that and it's just one example doesn't change the reality there's plenty of fucking much larger accounts that are doing that and even that person being able to tweet that and not getting banned in and of itself shows that the platform has no interest in tackling hate speech that's the argument that i'm trying to make here they're not interested and the problem is when they get galvanized what do they do these nazis when they get galvanized they organize and then they go out in public and do insane shit like the unite the right rally I saw a dude responding to the literal execution cartel video calling you the n-word while deliberately censoring the n-word oh well, that's nice of him they at least censor the n-word there you know and now he has new rules and so he's allowed them back on just like trump everybody else um and he engages in sort of this jokey jokey manner that does not show hey um, that might be a problem. Like today, Mark Cuban, who is sort of the polar opposite of Elon Musk in temperament and right. style, uh, was engaging with Stephen Miller and Matt Walsh over their obsession with mo woke mob. They just seem to be, I guess the Burning Man people set them off for something right. covered with mud. I saw they were attacking some 29-year-old woman who doesn't yes, have kids. I don't know. I, whatever. Yeah. They have someone to attack every day. Right. Um, and, and so he was engaging in a really interesting way that was debating. And Elon's just going... Interesting, exactly, that kind of stuff. So right. it's sort of uh, giving people signals, and that's what people think that he's doing. I think that's what he's doing. So last month, the, C the new CEO mm -hmm. of X, who yes. Elon Musk had hired to supposedly be yeah. the, the run, run the company, yeah. uh, Linda Yaccarino? Linda Yaccarino. Yaccarino. She used to work for NBC. Uh, she said that brands were going to come back to X. The company was about to break even. Mm -hmm. it, it, did that happen? Is it profitable? Um, I, 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 no idea. No idea. It wasn't not breaking even before, but the, but the advertising declined rather considerably after Musk got there. He did a lot of layoffs. He insulted advertisers. He threatened them. He then said it was their fault. It's always someone's fault in Elon's world, except for Elon. And that's the problem. And Linda has her hands full. Uh, she's a very professional person. But, you know, some of her statements, you know, everything's great here. There's no problem here. You, you don't... You, it's like being told when you're in a very dangerous city, it's totally safe to walk the streets. Right. It's, just, it's just a less pleasant experience. It's very unpleasant. Yeah. That's my... All right. Yeah. Kara Swisher, it's great to see you. Thank you. Thanks for being here.